Before we get into today's topic, I'd just like to say that this video is proudly sponsored by FS Academy, which produced the very best tutorials for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And indeed, whether you are a professional pilot or just starting out, there's definitely a training package for you. I've done many of them now, and I really do like how they are from real world pilots and instructors, which give you a very bespoke and very natural way of learning. All the links will be in the description below. I highly recommend that you check them out and it's why they are sponsoring this video today. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel and indeed this very impromptu video of me flying around Scotland in the brand new big screen micro OLED VR headset. That is, well, it weighs about the same as a Quest 2 controller, <laughs> if not less than that. You might notice the frames per second is extremely high. In fact, this is native frames per second. I'm not using motion reprojection, nothing like that. This is the absolute maximum frame rate of the refresh rate that I'm using, which is 75 Hertz. So in order to achieve this high frame rate, um, I'm using a DLSS with FSR sharpening, which makes the overall display very very nice indeed and it's just not budging at all from 75 frames per second now bear in mind i am using a beastly computer it's a 13900k running an rtx 4090 but this really does showcase what this sim can do because if you experience vr the way it's meant to be at 90 frames per second it is absolutely a joy to behold it really really is and you can do it in the big screen beyond VR headset because you can go as low as 75 frames per second. That gives you more headroom. And the great thing is, is 75 frames per second with this headset feels great. There's no flashing. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. It doesn't feel nauseating like it can do with other headsets. In fact, you know, I've tried 60 hertz with the Reva G2. It's horrible. I've tried 72 hertz with the Quest 2. Didn't like that either. Um, this is the first time really that I'm running anything lower than 90 hertz and it feels great. Another good reason for running 75 hertz is the fact that this is the pure native resolution of the headset. And it looks absolutely beautiful, especially in a scene like this where it's quite moody. There's some sort of uh, shadows casting from the clouds onto the ground. It, you know, it just picks them out so well with this OLED screen. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually think the Crystal has a far better display than this. Um, I really do, actually. But if you consider how incredibly small this headset is and what it's offering, it is an incredible feat of engineering. If you consider the size difference, even to the Vari Aero to this, it's a massive difference. In fact, I would call it a generational leap in, you know, form factor, without a doubt. This is what we want to be experiencing. All VR pilots want this kind of comfort because right now, with the facial interface, which is molded to my face, I can just keep flying for hours and hours, no problems at all. In fact, the weird thing is, I don't know why this is the case, but when I first put the headset on, it doesn't feel quite as comfortable, but then it kind of, um, it's like it just attaches to my face or something, or it just settles. So, you know, as I'm getting to know this more and more, I am really enjoying this headset. It's something very different, a completely new experience for me. Um, I think the only thing that come close to this was the Apara 5K, which is also a micro OLED uh, VR headset. But of course, this is actually working, you know, unlike that headset, which was a bit of a disaster, unfortunately. Now, one other thing I want to mention with this micro OLED panel, and this was the same with the Apara 5K, is that there is some slight color distortions, or perhaps a better word is to call it uh, discoloration, like a browning, a tinting on the edges of the display. Now, it's not noticeable 90% of the time. In fact, even now, I can't really see it. I'm looking really hard here maybe slightly on the real far outer edges it's more noticeable say in a white background sort of situation like perhaps when you look at the main menu and then sort of look away from it 
at a pure white background, that's when you notice it. It really isn't a deal breaker, guys, but I really do think it's worth mentioning because any imperfections, anything about this headset, good or bad, I'm going to let you know, of course. But as you can see, we still are locked at 75 frames per second, which just makes touring low to the ground, looking at all the beautiful scenery, an absolute joy, folks. It really is. Anyway, this is just a very quick video as I'm sort of getting to know the uh, big screen beyond more and more. Please do let me know in the comments what you'd like to see as always. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Take care and from a Microsoft Flight Simulator at native frames per second, something I never say, ever, I'll see you again very soon. Take care and bye for now.